do know that there is a right way to poop. There actually is. We want to poop without having to strain and push and spend hours on the toilet. If we're spending hours on the toilet and or, and or we're having to push and strain to get the poop out, then we are predisposing ourselves to having hemorrhoids, anal fissures, pelvic organ prolapses, and all that stuff can wreak havoc on our body and doesn't feel good. So there is a right way to poop and I am gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video. I'm Dr. Allison Felt, I own Body Motion Physical Therapy and I'm a pelvic expert physical therapist and I help people live their best life through the inside out, okay? We get our muscles working strong, feeling good, so we can not ha wreak havoc and have to have constipation and deal with incontinence. And we help people keep their organs inside their bodies. And we do that by things like teaching them how to poop, how to coordinate their pelvic floors so they're not having to push and strain to get their poop out. So thanks for joining me. I'm going to teach you now how to have a healthy and happy bowel movement. The very first thing you need to know is when you get the urge to poop, you need to listen to that urge to poop. When you're getting the urge to poop, the colon has stretched out and told, and there's a signal that has gone from that colon to the brain that says, Hey, my colon is full. We are ready to empty. If you ignore that initial cue, it is going to make it so the brain starts to ignore the cues that come from the colon, and then the colon is just gonna get more and more full without giving you cues that you need to poop. And this can lead to constipation, and it can even lead to diarrhea because the stool will have to turn to liquid in order to go around the blockages or the full colon to at least get some out and decrease some of the pressure. When the colon is full and not emptied, that puts increased pressure down on the bladder, which then makes it you more susceptible to bedwetting, to peeing your pants, to any form of incontinence because of the amount of pressure that the colon ends up placing on the bladder itself. So the minute you get the urge to poop, I want you to take that as a sign listen, know that you need to get to the bathroom within 15 minutes of that urge, the sooner the better. Then when you get to the toilet, you are going to sit fully down on the toilet. When you get to the toilet, you're going to sit fully down on the toilet. You want your feet flat and you don't want them, you don't want to be up on your tiptoes. Um, a really good situation is to use a stool or a squatty potty to help bring the knee above the hip joint. And what this is going to do is it's going to help what we call straighten the chute. So there's something inside your body called the anal rectal angle, and it's where the sigmoid comes down to the rectum and there's a kink there. Well, if you raise your hips above your, your knees above your hips, then that's going to help straighten the chute. If you don't have access to raising uh, to a stool to raise your knees up, then you can simply just lean forward and rest your elbows on your legs and that can help you straighten the chute. Okay, so once you're in this position, we are going to use a breath technique to help get the poop out. Now you've already gotten the urge to poop. Now you're going to breathe the poop out. So when we get here, we're not just sitting down and pushing and feeling our abdominals get tight, okay? That's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is the minute we come into this position, we start to breathe into our bellies and we start to breathe into our pelvic floor. So if you wanna do this with me to learn this breath pattern, you're gonna put your hands on your belly and you're gonna take a nice deep breath into the belly and then exhale and let it go. Breathe into the belly, exhale and let it go, and then into the belly. When you breathe into the belly, you should feel your pelvic floor opening and your anus flaring open, and then exhale, you'll get some recoil. So we're gonna use that breath pattern to help evacuate the poop without having to push. So 
So you're in this bent over position, elbows on knees and or you're using a squatty potty or a stool. And then you begin to do your breathing. You're gonna deep breath in. That's one, exhale and let it go. And maybe the stool comes out before the third breath and that's okay. It might take a couple more breaths. But at the top of the third inhale, what you're gonna do here is you're gonna deep breath in and then you're gonna gently bear down like you're trying to pass gas, but you don't want anyone to see you fart. So you're excursion, you're creating an excursion or a lengthening of the pelvic floor muscles, but you're not pushing down the organs. So you're just simply, you're inhaling and opening pelvic floor. And then when you bear down, you're just opening a little bit further. Like you're trying to pass the gas, but without having to push extensively. And so once you do that, hopefully the stool has come through. Now, if that hasn't happened and you feel like your poop is just really hard to get out, then you might need to make some dietary changes to get more fiber, get more water, or take some supplements in order to help get natural peristalsis. And peristalsis is the movement of the colon that creates the pumping of the poop to come through to create the bowel movement, essentially. So I hope you found this helpful. This is exactly how you should start to initiate your bowel movement. Movements. And this takes discipline to be able to poop like this. When we are in such a rush all day, every day, it's hard to be like, I'm going to go sit on the toilet and breathe my poop out. A lot of times we just want to like poop and go, right? If you have to be disciplined to do this, you will make yourself do that. And that is going to help protect your pelvic floor. It's going to protect your pelvic organs and it's going to save you constipation, pelvic organ prolapse, or urinary incontinence in the future. So I hope you found this helpful. Teach your kids how to poop like this. And I hope you have some great poops and bowel movements for the years to come. Take care.